Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by CakeWallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. CakeWallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by Sweetwater Digital Asset Consulting. Connecting new money with old money since 2018. Cake Wallet, Sweetwater Digital are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in monerotalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Sri Aravinda Krishnan an applied cryptography postdoc at CMU who has co-authored various papers that are laying the groundwork for developing a second layer on Monero, aka payment channels, akin to the Lightning Network on Bitcoin. Doug and Aravinda discuss what an LN-like network on Monero would look like, what developments are required on the Monero side to make payment channels possible, and much more. Monero Talk starts now. Aravind or Sri? Which, which do I call you? Uh, Aravind is good. Okay, what's but Sri is your first name, correct? It's a uh, it's a big first name, yeah. So it's a Sri Aravind Krishnan. So that's my first. Oh, name. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we met in at MoneroCon, right in Denver. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's only been uh, you know it was 2019, but it's basically it's been a decade right in terms of yeah. what's gone on in the world and in in crypto yeah Snape. yeah i mean it was uh i i the monero con was fun uh so yeah i thought that was great you know we're doing a Monerotopia, right did i tell you that in the email yeah you mentioned it yeah um so in miami right or... yeah miami april 7th Maybe you want to. Uh, maybe you want to be a speaker there. Sure. Uh, I mean, just let, tell me the pass on the details, and then I I see how my scheduling is during. So April seven. April seven. Yep. Okay. It's during. It's the same time that Bitcoin does their big conference in Miami. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I mean, around that time, I'm hoping to travel somewhere, uh, but uh, April 7. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Where are you located these days? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to say if you don't want to, but just. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in CMU. Okay. Uh, and Pittsburgh. So I'm in Pittsburgh right now. Um, so I came here. It's been like uh, two months. So before that, I was in Germany. So I was in Nuremberg. So I, yeah, I, I wrapped up my PhD and then joined here as a postdoc. Very cool, Matt. So what did you actually get your PhD in? So I have, okay, so I have not yet defended my thesis. I was, um, I'm, I'll be defending in uh, exactly two weeks. Um, so my thesis was on um, how do you make Payments, payment protocols in cryptocurrencies such that you don't rely too much on what script or smart contract support the blockchain gives you. In other words, developing payment protocols that are scriptless and you know work universally through all currencies by assuming the bare minimum that the currency can give. Um, for example, you you want some form of authentication for payments, right? I mean, someone needs to sign something. Otherwise, how do you trust that it came from the said person? So yeah, the idea was, okay, let's say the, the blockchain gives you a signature scheme, like a signature verification, right? 
and then what can you do with it so yeah that was my that was a high level that's the high level of uh, what i did it's so did that stem from uh, Monero? I mean, that sounds like you had Monero on, on your mind when you were. So, yeah, this kind of this kind of goes back to uh, my initial work on Monero. So, yeah, um, yeah. For example, you don't have much of a script support, right? I mean, um, so for example, how do you do timed payments in Monero? Um, you you could do that in Bitcoin. Uh, but uh, how do you do that here? And then, yeah, and then there were a couple of works before, like before I really started getting into this topic and they were focusing on, um, you know, uh, trying to remove this hash time lock contracts, which was this HTLC based uh, protocols. And they were trying to remove this and they wanted to just use signature schemes, but they they were more tailored to you know the like the ECDSA or the Schnorr signatures. So yeah, and 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 yeah, in in my papers I cite the compatibility with Monero as um, as an application. Um, yeah, awesome. That, you know that makes that makes me happy. We have some <laughs> uh, you know some intelligent brains interested in uh, in Monero. What what was your original interest in Monero? How'd you how you arrive at Monero? So I think it started uh, with my master's uh, thesis. So the idea was to understand what kind of a provable, cryptographically provable security that you can get from the concrete uh, uh, this linkable ring signature that Monero uses, right? So it started out as analyzing and understanding formally what what security you get. Um, so back then I had no clue about any cryptocurrency. So in my first foray was studying uh, this Monero, um, and then the, I worked on a project which kind of uh, grew with more people coming in, um, and I think. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if you are familiar. So there was this paper called Omni Ring, which Omni was Ring. yeah, that's what we spoke yeah. last time, I believe. In yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, that was a paper where we 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 kind of uh, try to go beyond just the linkable ring signature, and then try to formalize the entire payment uh, payment system that Monero uses. Like uh, I think back then. Uh, you just had this tracking and viewing feature that was just coming in with the stealth address concept. And then, so we kind of, okay, let's, let's include everything and then try to see what guarantees you get. Right. So we did that and, uh, we happened to notice that, okay, then you can actually have a more efficient, uh, construction. Um, there were some, uh, um, um, I think right just around that time, you had bulletproofs that uh, gave this uh, efficient range proofs. And then we kind of extended the bulletproof uh, framework to also prove uh, ring membership. And then, yeah, so that project happened. Um, and then I, uh, I was visiting Purdue in 2019. And then I, okay, I went back to Germany. And then I, I had and, and another uh, project where we wanted to study how do you do uh, a, a timed signature? So what is a timed signature? So I give you a, I give you a commitment to a signature and then you're able to open the commitment and get the signature, let's say at a predetermined time, right? So uh, let's say a few hours, few days. Um, so I had this uh, uh, project and then we were able to give um, like a, such a timed signature uh, constructions for ECDSA, Schnorr, um, and I think BLS. So then I, I was wondering if you could actually do it for the, uh, the linkable ring signature that Monero uses, right? And it has a very close structure with Schnorr. Uh, it's... It, it kind of loops around, but the, the structure is very similar to a schnorr. And uh, yeah, so then I was uh, I worked on it, and then I was able to uh, um, kind of 
come up with a, a protocol where a, a user, a Monero user, signs a, a transaction, a Monero transaction, and then is able to generate a uh, a timed commitment to the signature, and, and it's verifiable, so it's it's practical, and uh, he gives it to you, and what what guarantee you get is that you can open this commitment and obtain the signature after time t. Okay, so what does this give you, right? So this gives you a way to do timed payments in Monero, right? So you don't have the timeout script. Um, uh, you, you don't have that in Monero, but yeah, then you get this kind of, uh, uh, okay, I give you the transaction, but I give you a commitment to the signature and you get the signature only after time t. So in in some sense, the transaction is valid only after time t, right? Um, yeah, so that was one. And then, yeah, so then uh, I, uh, okay, I figured that, okay, you can actually do this uh, one version of payment channels for Monero. That, that was PayMo, uh, you're basically describing. Yes, yes, probably. yes. So that was PayMo, uh, where you kind of uh, had a, a bound on the, uh, so it was unidirectional payment channels and you had a bound on the lifetime of the channel, right? Okay, so what was left open there was how to do bidirectional channels, uh, because you have uh, you have, yeah, you naturally want to have bidirectional payment channels because you. It, I think it kind of uh, captures more payment scenarios than just a unidirectional channel. And and two unidirectional channels in opposite directions does not seem to realize a, a like certain cases of a bidirectional payment channel. So yeah, that was left open, and then uh, so recently uh, uh, I worked on a project. I think it's called Sleepy Channels. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, the idea. Okay, so yeah, so the limiting barrier to go from a unidirection to a bidirection was that how do you revoke payments, right? So in unidirection, it's like okay, so you keep making payments in one direction, and the most recent payment is always the valid one, like. The guy, the, the the recipient, always prefers the most recent payment because the most recent payment pays more money to him rather than the previous ones. In a bidirection, uh, both both users are paying in the opposite directions, and then when a new payment comes, you have to revoke the old one, right? All the old ones. So how do you do that? And that was the limiting barrier. Um, uh, and and you kind of do that in Monero. So sorry, you kind of do that in uh, Bitcoin uh, by um, by making yeah. The, so what? Okay, before coming to watchtowers, right? So there's like uh, okay. So you're actually a step ahead of me. So before coming to watchtowers, so I think the uh, the Bitcoin bidirectional protocol heavily relies on this uh, this relative time locks, mm -hmm. right? This sequence verify. I, I think that's what they, it's called. I'm not too familiar with the name of the script. Um, so the relative time lock is, uh, it says that, you know, uh, you can spend from an address, uh, um, uh, you know, you can spend from an address after some delta blocks have been mined after this address was appeared on chain. So this is like a relative time lock. So uh, the time lock is relative to the point where the address appears on the chain. And this is very crucial uh, for achieving uh, the bidirectional payments in Bitcoin. So uh, so how do you revoke? So you just say a revocation mechanism of an old payment just says that, okay, if the old payment is ever posted, right, by some malicious user in the payment channel, the other user can take the money out, right? Okay, so that's a revocation. But then you have a race condition, right? So this guy posts a revoked payment, but then this guy, the other harness guy, uh, tries to punish, but then both are going together. It's a race condition. And then that's where the relative time lock comes into play, where the guy who is posting the payment originally, whether it is revoked or the new one, so that guy, he posts the payment, but he can only take the coins out, let's say, after waiting for some delta time units. And this delta time units is the time where the harnessed user can come and punish, right? So, yeah, so this was the mechanism uh, in use in Bitcoin. And then watchtowers came into play uh, because 
the users had to stay like he had to stay persistently online, right? So the honest guy has to stay online because you never know when this guy is going to cheat, right? So and you you whenever this guy cheats, he only has this very short interval delta to punish. So then the proposal of watchtowers helps here because the honest guy can uh, outsource the 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 part of being online and watching to the watchtower. So he just goes into a mechanism which the watchtower and says that, okay, if a revoked payment is posted, you are responsible for punishing and I'm going to go offline, All right? Uh, so yeah, that's how watchtowers come into play. Um, and yeah, so in, in this new work, we actually uh, identify, we went through some of the, I mean, the most prominent watchtower proposals and then, uh, so they have some, uh, Issues. So, for example, in some proposals, you you have to uh, inform the watchtower of every payment you make, right? So every payment you make and every payment you revoke. So you have to constantly, uh, you know, reveal these uh, details to the watchtower. And in some proposals, you have to pay the watchtower, um, uh, you know, consistently for him to be online. So it's you have to pay a fee for the watchtower. And there are some proposals where the watchtower can go unpunished where if this guy if the watchtower goes offline himself right so like like he is not punishing correctly so this guy could get away without being punished so there were some you know minor points with every watchtower proposal that we saw so yeah so the the point was we wanted to uh we wanted to not use watchtowers and we wanted to not use uh, this relative time blocks. And then we said, okay, can we just come up with a bi-directional payment channels uh, that only has a signature verification uh, possible? Um, and okay, so, and we also need the absolute time block, right? So we, we don't want relative time block, but we want absolute time block. And as I said before, the absolute time block can be realized with this time signatures. Right. So you, you, what do you want to say with absolute time lock? You want to say that an, a, a transaction is valid only after time t. That's an absolute time lock. And you can realize that with time signatures. You can just say the signature appears only after time t. So it's, that's fine, right? So that was fine. So we wanted to have a bidirectional protocol, payment channel protocol that only has signature verification and a, a, an absolute time lock. Yeah, so then we uh, we managed to uh, come up with a protocol, and it seems that yeah, all you need is a like all you need is a signature. So this signature scheme could very well be the linkable ring signature of uh, Monero. So all it requires is um, for our protocol to go through is that two users can uh, can jointly you know run a run a two party protocol between them to sign a transaction. So, um, and then you use the, the time, the payment from Paymo, which gives you unidirectional payment channel, right? It gives you basically a timed payment, right? You can time a payment in Monero. So take that and then you use the, the bidirectional payment channel protocol that we have in the new work. You put them together um, and that gives you the first, uh, um, that, that gives you basically the first bidirectional payment channel protocol for Monero with some caveats, right? So you don't, we don't want the signature scheme to change. I think the, the linkable ring signature that's in use in Monero, that's fine. We don't change the scheme itself. But what you need is you have to sign transactions ahead of time. So you have to sign transactions with keys in them ahead of time that, you know, before they appear on the blockchain. Uh, so that is a feature that if Monero has, then the, the protocol goes through. Uh, yeah. So does Ken Monero currently do that? Uh, I'm So I got in touch with the, the developers at Monero. So when we did the Paymo first, mm. so Right. So in Paymo, so you have two things. So in Paymo, you can commit 
to a signature. So you can generate a timed commitment to a signature, right? Or you can generate a timed commitment to the to like the secret key. So there are two things, right? So the in the first one, it seemed when I got in touch with the developers, like it seemed like you couldn't generate a uh, a transaction a signature on a transaction where the 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 spending key in the transaction has not appeared on the blockchain yet right so you had the i don't recall fully but there was a problem with the key offset so every key had an offset and the offset depended on when the key appeared uh, on the blockchain and now we want a transaction where the spending key has not appeared yet on the blockchain and how do you how do you figure out the key offset for this key, right? So that that was an issue, um, and this is an issue whenever you want to generate a signature on a transaction and the spending key has not appeared on the blockchain yet. So, yeah, so that there are still some uh, I think, but these seem to be not a cryptographic barrier. So uh, that's what I think m my work has uh, shown that you don't have. Now, any cryptographic barrier to get a, uh, um, a unidirection or a bidirectional payment channel, but there are still some, uh, you know, implementation level barriers to uh, get it into full production. Yeah. Does Seraphis get us any closer to that? This is obviously might be a question you're that you can't. Really so, so I'm not familiar with the. So, can you give me some? Uh, some into with some idea uh well seraphis is a new they're looking it's well you were working on omni ring right so i mean this is uh basically what what monero is looking to adopt in place of something like omni ring um mm -hmm. i'm not about to try to get into the the, the, the technicals of it but effectively mm -hmm. you know it's going to allow us to have much larger ring sizes um it's going to improve uh the view keys I see. Um, it's going to prove the ability to, uh, I guess. I guess do so is this is this based on some academic work or is this a developer effort? Uh, this is. You know, are you familiar with Co? No. Okay. Co is one of the one of the devs for Monero. Uh, I see. Basically, an implementation that he's created. I see. I see. Coming out of other previous work that was done. Mm. Uh, Volantis Spark. Are you familiar with that? Volantis. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's it's related to that. It's basically a, a different version of of, of that. Mm. Um, but I was just wondering if you were keeping up with that. If that's something that is potentially offering uh, a solution there with what needs to I mean, do, do... To, to have like uh, a second layer built on top of it. So okay, one thing one thing about the. Uh the new work that I have is, um, okay. So the, okay. Um, the timed payment, uh, the, the, the point about timed payment. Yeah. You can actually do it with the key. So I see. Um, we uh -huh. need to get you talking to co, uh, you know, that, that would be a much better conversation than talking with me about it. Um, no, I, I think so. I think on a on a very high level or an intuitive level, I, I, I mean, I've not uh, thought about this too much. But my first impression is, so the new the in in my new paper, the bidirectional payment channel protocol does not rely on the specifics of uh, or any details specific details about your authentication mechanism. So. I, so far, Monero has been using linkable ring signatures, right? Maybe, as you say in your new uh, uh, the the new development, you make use of I don't know some some form. I, I suspect it's some adoption of bulletproofs, some extension of bulletproofs. I suspect, but I may be wrong. Um, as long as you you can efficiently run a a, a two party protocol to jointly generate this signature or a proof or a zero knowledge proof or whatever. Um, if you have this two party, if like if if this two party protocol is efficient, and then I think the the protocol from my work should still go through. Yes, um, and yeah, so I think 
I think if you generate timed commitments for secret keys, like you don't have, you may not have signatures anymore, right? I mean, as you say, in your new proposal, you may not have the same schnar like structure signatures anymore. If you don't have that, um, if you still are able to generate timed commitments to secret keys and and the blueprint from my recent paper should, I think, should still give bidirectional payment channels. Uh, again, condition supply is with the key offset. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how uh, that's going to, yeah. So, like I said, so were, were you thinking about Monero in particular then when you when you guys were developing these papers? Uh, or was, were you thinking about Bitcoin as well, like a, uh, a new version of like... No, so I think one of the main motivations to... Um, so I would put it this way. Um, one, uh, I mean, if you wanted Bitcoin compatibility, we have already protocols, right? Uh, so one of the main motivations was that chains, the, 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 the prominent example being Monero, that does not have the, the, the required script uh, support, right? So the, 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 in all my motivations, it's always, you know, the privacy preserving currency of Monero that does not have this support, which Bitcoin does. So it does not have this, right? So then, yeah, so these works involved coming up with protocols that does not make use of any scripts, right? Mm -hmm. And as a consequence, it could be, uh, uh, we motivate that it should be compatible with Monero, right? So it's not like we, uh, there was Monero and we wanted to develop a protocol for that. But we wanted to develop a protocol that could be compatible with Monero. So it's, yeah, there's a slight uh, emphasis difference. That's it. Well, it seems like it's it's solving some problems for Bitcoin as well, though, right? Like getting rid of the watchtowers and things like that. I imagine uh, that... Yeah, I mean, yes, you're right. So um, you're right. So it, it would remove the need for watchtowers. Uh, if the watch, if you are going to use watchtowers just for bidirectional payment channels, so you don't need watchtowers anymore. Um, of course, you you don't want uh, you you don't need even the the timed commitments anymore in Bitcoin, right? Because you have the absolute time locks in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, you only need the time commitment when you come to Monero, right? So nice. uh, yeah. Very cool, man. So, I mean, oftentimes people in Monero, they're talking about scaling and how is it going to scale? And yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's, yeah, I mean, I was, uh, so there was, I don't know. So you must be familiar, right? So the, um, there was this, uh, there was this another payment channel protocol for Monero that I think it was called DLSAG. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it came around the same time as Paymo and, uh, uh, but there you had to change the, uh, the like you had to change the transaction scheme of Monero. Um, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I think I think it's it's uh, it's high time that you you implement uh, layer two like this, this off chain payments in Monero, right? I mean, especially given that your transactions are um, unusually large because you have to include rings in them. And yeah, you have scalability issues coming if you want a wider audience to adopt uh, Monero, right? And yeah, sure. you're right. I concur with you. Do, do you so do you think, uh, you know, your assessment is much better than mine. Um, how, you, I guess you've proven that it's that it's possible uh, in terms of cryptography. So do you think it's just something that it's just a matter of time needs to be worked on? There's really, are there any major hurdles to overcome other than, I guess, what you've already mentioned? I think, I think the, I think the, the major hurdle is the key offset, right? So um, I think probably the developers who are working in Monero very hands-on would really know how challenging it would be. Um, but if, if we overcome that, then all that is left is to, you know, uh, is to just write down the write down the two-party protocol. Uh, just write down uh, how can two users uh, jointly generate a signature on a transaction, and 
yeah, that's it. I think I think the second part should be uh, doable fairly quickly. I think the the major hurdle is the first one, and I suspect if you want to have any form of, uh, I suspect if you want to have any form of bidirectional payment channel protocol, you you will have to overcome this key offset problem one way or the other. Um, yeah, it would show up somewhere for sure. Yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting. Um, what do you think about Monero's base layer in terms of scalability? Um, so what is the what is the current uh, ring size that's used? Uh, 11. But you know, yeah. Monero uses the dynamic block sizes. I'm just curious if you have any thoughts there on. Uh, I, I'm not. I don't. I'm not following too closely about the about that aspect of Monero. Um, yeah, but I. Yeah, I, I. I won't be able to comment on okay. the base layer. But I. I think. I think a, a, a second layer wouldn't hurt, right? Sure. Sure. I mean, your fascination, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but really seems like what pulled you into Monero and I guess crypto in general is really the, the ring CT, ring CT, right? So the studying of... It started off with ring CT, yes. It had like, it had, it had everything almost when I started, right? So it had, uh, it had gaps to fill and uh, it had gaps in the formal model. You had to understand how can you uh, come up with a, a a formal cryptographic definition. It had gaps in understanding of uh, how far can you extend your scheme, right? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you have this linkable ring signature, but then you also had confidential transactions, but then you also had stealth addresses, then you also had range proofs, but then yeah, these are all pieces floating around. So how how, how are they fitting together? Are they really like you know fitting together to you know satisfy the formal model yeah i think it was a fascinating project when i started out uh, because it had gaps everywhere and kind of gave a hands on experience uh, for someone new uh, to you know to understand how the how the pieces are floating around yeah so what's your take on the technology today when you look at Monero today? Obviously, a second layer would be amazing, and it seems like that's inevitable with the work you've done. Uh, but the base technology um, that, you know, that you're talking about, especially things like Ring CT, I mean, do you see that as something that will need to eventually be swapped out for something else? And we're just like... I think the concept is that... I think the concept is there to stay, right? Ring CT is now just an abstraction. If you are going to, if you are going to swap it out, maybe you swap it, uh, swap the construction, the concrete construction. I'm not sure how you would. Uh, as an abstraction, it seems, it seems perfect, right? And 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 you don't want to have any sort of a, a, a trusted setup. Right, you you want to be trustless. Um, yeah, even if you even if you just throw some zk snarks at it, I think I think the ring the ring CT. Okay, maybe the name has to change. Uh, it's uh, probably it's not no longer a ring anymore. Right, you you would just call it a set. Uh, but I think the guarantees and the formalism that. I think we provided in Omni Ring will 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 remain. Uh, I think that will be that that's sound actually. Have you been following Zcash at all with their no release? No, uh, I, I try to I try to abstract myself from the as I said right. So I I, I try to abstract myself from uh, the concrete details of different uh, currencies. I just know what they have, what they don't have, mm -hmm. and more more of what they don't have right so if i know what they don't have then i know how to do something uh, based on what they don't have so uh, yeah but um, yeah i i hear uh, i i don't know I, I i suppose they are doing exciting stuff too i don't know yeah, well, they're they're trying to you know uh, implement new technology where they essentially get rid of the trusted setup and um, 
Now, did they manage to uh, replace or? It's, it's supposedly going to happen soon. Um, uh, yeah, it's been developed. It hasn't been uh, implemented yet. I see. I see. Yeah. I saw. I saw that uh, uh, recently. They also tried to do. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, so Monero managed to do a swap, right? Uh, they managed to do an atomic swap with Ethereum. Yeah. Was it? Uh, well, initially with Bitcoin, uh, and now recently with Ethereum, I because see. that was also something that came up in your in your original, I guess, Paymo paper, right? You yes. Yes. Doing that also as a way to do swaps. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. So it we could do swaps uh, when. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you do swaps with Bitcoin or Ethereum, I think you make use of uh, a, a timeout in in Bitcoin or Ethereum. So when you do a swap between Bitcoin and Monero, you have to somewhat rely on a timeout mechanism in the Bitcoin side of things. Uh, or when you do it with Ethereum, you have to rely on the timeout mechanism on the Ethereum side of things. So the atomic swap that we uh, gave in um, uh, Paymo uh, does not need a, a, a timeout on either chains as long as you have a time commitments, right? So if you have a time commitment to the signature, you can essentially swap um, between uh, these two currencies. And uh, the the other, now that I think about it, uh, the other thing with the swaps that we had at Paymo was that it was not just a one-to-one. -one. So it was not uh, one Bitcoin for one Monero. So it, I think it, I think we could also do uh, one Bitcoin for one Ethereum for one Monero. So it's, uh, you can think of it as a series of guys trying to swap between themselves. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, again, uh, it had, yeah, we had issues with uh, the key offset because, again, we had timed payments on all chains. And then when you do timed payments with Monero, you, yeah, you had the problem with key offsets. Yeah. By the way, congratulations for the swap. Uh, yeah. Congratulations to you as well. Uh, <laughs> no, it was, it was great to see. Great to see. Um so what, what would you like to see happen in Monero in terms of technology? I mean, what, what do you think it's missing at this point or where it can use more improvement? Um, I, think, um, I think there is a whole wide range of protocols that are currently running on top of, uh, let's just take Bitcoin, right? So there's like, okay, Maybe they're not running on top of Bitcoin, but there is a wide range of protocols that are compatible with Bitcoin. Um, I mean, it's probably too expensive to run those on Bitcoin right now, but at least in principle, they are compatible, right? Now, if you really take a close look at how, like, what is the reason for their compatibility, it just happens that they have a small script here, a small script there, right? Uh, like a timeout, right? So there's a small timeout here. There's a small, uh, I don't know, like some HTLC here or something like this. Now, what I would like to see in Monero is um, for all of these protocols, which are quite exciting, um, and these protocols could could be run on Monero, which still happens to be, I think, uh, affordable compared to Bitcoin. Uh, so for all these protocols to be run on Monero, it seems like there are only a very tiny margin of features that need to be added in Monero, right? So, for example, solving the key offset problem opens up a huge world of off-chain protocols. Off. So once you once you have timed payments, it opens up doors for uh, uh, like a, a, a wide range of protocols uh, um, where you can do uh, like fair fair cryptographic computation based on Monero, the users can get, um, you know, uh, uh, users can exchange information in Monero for a payment in a fair manner and so many other protocols just opens up if you just have 
you know, if you are able to overcome this key offset barrier. Um, and yeah, and so to me, it seems like if only Monero could include somehow as the support for a, a tiny feature here, or a tiny feature there, it seems, you know, the doors can open. Um, I, I, I mean, yeah, so initially I worked uh, I, in my Omniring, the effort was more about working on the base layer of Monero, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm, my work of late has been more focused on the second layer. Um, yeah, and yeah, it's just that, yeah, a few features here, there could go a long way. Um, yeah. So for people that are listening, um, I think people hear this, they're excited. They're like, oh, a second layer on Monero. I've heard rumors <laughs> of that. Sounds like it's feasible. It's possible. What What do you think the community can do to help, you know, push this forward? Um, I think, uh, I think, mo yeah, I think more, more academic research helps. Um, um, yeah, I think if more people, uh, uh, could, could work on Monero possibly so that I know I'm aware of some blockchain, uh, projects that, uh, that offer, um, uh, that offer grants for certain research groups, like you, they, they put out a problem and they say, okay, we offer you so much money, help us solve this. Um, a prominent example, um, um, I don't know, I think Algorand is doing that now, Protocol Labs, uh, they are doing that now. Um, I think I think that could actually in like bring in a wide range of uh, minds. And there's, there are some quite, I mean, I'm just a, um, like a postdoc now. So I, there are a, like several groups that have brilliant minds. Um, and I think it, that would be a very good first step uh, to bring in scientific minds to work on problems that Monero wants solved, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I, that's one thing that from a perspective of an academician, I, I see. Um, I, I, I can't say how uh, the developers feel. I think, yeah, I think the conferences helps, right? So the the Monero Con was uh, was a really fascinating one. So actually, I listened to the DLSAG paper during Monero Con. So and then I came up with Paymo a few months later. Oh, so okay. yeah, so it helps. So I think conferences, you know, in person, virtual seminars, and you putting grant proposals, uh, you know, I think that's, that would really help. That's important for people to hear. Uh, I, see. I, I like that you're saying this. Uh, did you, at that conference, so did you, you spoke with uh, the person that gave the presentation? I guess, was that uh, that day or just the presentation? So, I mean, I, I was, uh, uh, I knew, so the, the DL SAG was uh, presented by Pedro, Moreno Sanchez. So he's now at India in Spain. And you um, on other projects, right? Or was it no, no. So I recently worked with him on uh, this new project. Good and uh, yeah, so and I recently had another paper with him on that's going to appear next year at IEEE. Uh, and that was on how do you do uh, atomic swaps across any currency, essentially. So you know, that was a project I worked with him now, but yeah, I kind of, I think in person met and interacted with him during MoneroCon. Um, I mean, before that I was aware, uh, uh, I was aware of him, of, of him and then, yeah. Um, MoneroCon was the first time I actually personally interacted with him, yeah. That's cool, that's cool. Yeah, so I think, uh, I think like, yeah, the conferences grants, yeah, I think, uh, are, are, I mean, are you guys already thinking about these things, or am I the one to? <laughs> no, of course. You know, I'm not. I'm just one guy in the community. I just run the Monero Talk show. You know, I'm not the nuts and bolts of Monero. <laughs> um, but you know, they have they have the CCS, they have the Monero Research Lab. Uh, yeah, con obviously, people are talking about how to better coordinate, uh, get things funded. Uh, recently, Justin, I'm sure you're familiar with Justin Ernhoff. Mm -hmm. He uh, 
is part of a project called Magic Grants, which is going to be another way to obtain funding for Monero related projects, kind of similar to what Zcash does with giving out their grants. I see. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of talk and thought. Uh, I'm just curious to what you would have to say about it. And uh, obviously, I, I think that it's like yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm just one. I'm just one cog in a big wheel of researchers working on layer two uh, solutions from an academic perspective. Right. Um, but you'd I mean, several of see it implemented. You would obviously love to see it. Living. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I even my even my co-authors, right? I mean, um, in some of my papers, I mean they. Um, they have uh, so I mean some of my co-authors showed some and uh, and a problem with uh, how the uh, the payments are done in Lightning Network, right? So they they showed an attack. Um, yeah, and and yeah, so there's like like a lot of people working on off-chain payments, but um, and yeah, I think if Monero like really announces itself and says that okay, we have some problems here, uh, would you like to solve? We offer you some mm -hmm. some money for it or some internship for it or something like this. Yeah, I think I think it would drive the academic research into Monero in a much uh, it yeah much more speed. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, recently the other thing is a bounty system. Uh, they started that up. So, but but that that would be mostly for not an academic uh, research, right? Or is it? Uh, no, not for research, but kind of like yeah. here's a problem we're trying to solve. I see. Uh, everybody throws some Monero at it. You know, there's 20 Monero. If you solve it first, uh, you know, you get the Monero. I see. Um, um, but yeah, all, all good, all good thoughts that you have there, and hopefully people are listening that can, you know, start to implement these things. I mean, everybody is, but like you said, you know, it, it's a decentralized organization, right? So there, there's nobody calling the shots. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, um, you are right. You are right. Mm. It's it's difficult to do this uh, if, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think people, you know, they're going to listen to you today, like I said, and maybe even for the first time, be like, oh, wow, I didn't realize uh, second layer on Monero is, is that real. Uh, I think people saw it more. So. I, think, I think it's quite real, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's just one barrier to cross, and yeah, then it's, yeah. In my proposal or someone else's, uh, yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, I'm shocked to see atomic swaps as fast as we have seen them come to fruition. You know, I've, it was talked about for a while, I, I, but personally, I just, without understanding uh, everything behind it, I just thought it would take a lot longer to actually get there, and I'm impressed that. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I saw the news. Uh, yeah, it was like okay, the first swap was done with Ethereum. I mean, the Bitcoin, sure. I, I mean, I was aware of developments going on, mm -hmm. so I saw a news. Uh, I saw, I think, Twitter. Uh, few, I don't know, a few days, few weeks back, was it the with, Ethereum? Huh? Yeah, the Ethereum one. Yeah, she's yeah, giving was... a conference by the way. She'll be there. So yeah, so you, you guys can talk. You guys can talk. Who knows? Maybe that'll be your uh, something will come. Yeah, from. that. That would be fun, yeah. Is is the conference in person, virtual, house, uh, semi? In person, in person. Okay, it's, it's completely in person. Completely in person, one day conference. I mean, obviously, we'll broadcast what takes place there, but um, people participating will be in person. Hopefully, hopefully the the situation is good enough, right? I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's outside of our, you know, out of our control. Exactly. Um, but Miami is an ideal place to to gamble with that. Uh, they'll, be the last, they'll be the last ones to to shut things down, so to speak. So, I think it, I think it's gonna gonna happen. Mm -hmm. What uh, what else are you know are you thinking about these days? So, um, it sounds like you made a lot of headway in describing how a second layer can be done for Monero. Uh, what's kind of the next piece in your mind that you want to work on? Not so maybe not what Monero needs, but other things that you're thinking about. So, so I mean, re recently I've been kind of uh, trying to expand my uh, area of work. I mean, one one pro one uh, proposal that I have in mind and. Uh, I'm fairly confident it would work 
what I'm yet to go through is about uh, um, is again extending is again extending protocols like layer two protocols that are compatible with Bitcoin um, and make it uh, make it universal, right? So such that it's also compatible with Monero. So that that line of thought is still there, and I am kind of exploring a few other protocols. Hello. Oh no. Yeah, so the line of thought about making payment protocols uh, compatible with Bitcoin uh, and make them compatible with universally so that they are also compatible with Monero. So that line of thought is still there, right? So payment channels, bidirectional payment channels, they are just one, two payment protocols. There are many other off-chain payment protocols like payment channel networks, virtual channels, virtual payment channel network, and so, so on and so forth. And they all have their advantages of making improving scalability even from a layer two point of view. So that line of uh, thought is still there. So that I'm still looking at those things. Um, and uh, yeah, so recently I was working on, um, uh, I was recently working on coin mixing. So how do you do uh, coin mixing using a an untrusted, uh, a tumbler in the middle, right? So there has there has been recent effort, like some efforts going on that uh, direction as well. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean, coin mixing per se may not make sense for Monero. I don't know. Uh, maybe some. I don't know. Uh, yeah, if the Monero, if the Monero developers say that it actually makes sense, yeah, maybe maybe we can see why it would make sense and develop one. Um, yeah, and um, so I've tried to recently also work on uh, um, this uh, discrete log contracts, which is again a thing, huge thing. Uh, again, so our uh, idea, hopefully, um, I'm also works for Monero. Uh, yeah, we are still in 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 development for that. Um, yeah, the, the, it's generally around the blockchain space and applications to blockchains, uh, cryptocurrency, some projects here and there at the consensus level. So I, I also worked a lot on time lock puzzles and I don't know. So the, the time lock puzzles are like the 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 fundamental building block for a time commitment. Uh, so I worked on uh, homomorphic time lock puzzles for scalability and so on. and. Uh, these seem to have a uh, a wide range of applications than what we initially thought. So where you, um, I mean, the cryptocurrency space and the blockchain space is opening up a lot more applications for this primitive. So I'm trying to explore those things as well. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a bunch of open problems laying around. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had your mind, man. That the things you're tinkering on are, are quite interesting and impactful. What do you think of Bitcoin's Lightning Network as it stands, um, and then maybe how you would compare it to what a Lightning Network on Monero would look like? I think, uh, yeah. For for one, I think it would be much more private. Uh, um... Yeah, it would be hard to it would be hard to get the the lightning net. So there's this there's this web page that gives lightning network stats, right? Uh, that t tells like how many nodes are there, how many coins are locked, and how many, what's the lifetime and so on. So for one, you can't. I, I suppose you can't have that web page for Monero if lightning networks comes for Monero, right? Um, um, but I think uh, I think if you I don't know. So the, the I think the major application of Lightning Networks for now, at least, is is uh, making these payments in betting and gaming and so on. But uh, yeah, I mean that could certainly open up for Monero. But then uh, you would ideally think of a more uh, uh, like a grander application, right? Like uh, like an e-commerce website. Like imagine you opening up an account with. Uh, say Amazon and Amazon accepts payments in Bitcoin and you don't want to uh, constantly create new accounts. You just want to have one account and then make payments to that 
Amazon. And let's say you're not happy with the product, so he refunds you. And then you make, you adjust your balance, so on and so forth, right? Yeah, I mean, applications like that could open up also, right, to uh, on top of Monero. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, if anything, if any motivation for layer two, I think Lightning Net, the success of Lightning Network, uh, is a great motivating factor to actually develop a Lightning Network a kind of a thing for Monero, right? And then, so I mean, you kind of touched on it a little bit already. So, do you think the the end result is kind of one one second layer that's interoperable with multiple? So. Just you like, you want interoperability between currencies? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so we have we have the Lightning Network on Bitcoin right now, and we're talking about potentially seeing uh, some version of that on top of Bitcoin. I mean, on uh, uh, Monero. Eventually, are they both using the same second layer, or their second layers are just uh, interoperating with each other? Or? I think uh, I think really depends on what so. Um, the new technology that you you said is is uh, is probably going to be adopted into Monero, right? Mm -hmm. It really, I think, once that happens, you, we may have to rehash some of our work. So we may have to revisit some of our work uh, because whatever I've so whatever I've shown in principle also applies for whatever would come in the future, but that's just in principle. You want something efficient, right? Um, so in that sense, whatever new is going to come into Monero, we have to take a closer look um, at it um, because you have much more moving components than just a simple Bitcoin transaction, right? In, you have like range proof computation and commitments computation proof and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I I think I think we are in the initial steps. I think uh, um, to get to get things at the the speed of Lightning Network that is currently in Bitcoin. I think it it's still a way to go, but sure. But I think what I, what at least my work shows that it's feasible. So that for sure we can work on optimizing it. Awesome, man! Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, I'll follow up with you about Monerotopia. would love to have you come down there. Sure, sure. Let, let you brainstorm with the other. Of course, yeah. Just, uh, just. I mean, hopefully things are fine and then the conference happens in person. Sure. Um, yeah, let me, just send me the details and uh, I will get back to you on that. Uh, yeah, ni very nice talking to you. I, I hope I was able to, yeah, I, I, I hope I made some sense. Uh, of course you did. <laughs> Of course it did. It made sense to me. So. Okay. I'm Should glad. A lot more sense to even to others out there. So thank you, Matt. Yeah. Great. Appreciate you taking the time and thank yeah. you for all the work that you're doing on Monero. Absolutely. Absolutely. No problem. All right. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.